The other thing when you don't sleep, all those niggles and woodies that normally don't the bother. What? Niggles. And what's yeah. a woody? But the uh, uh, woodies. <laughs> Not a woody. A wood. Oh, I thought you meant like a woody. <laughs> Give up the fax line, or I mean cigarettes. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm glad you cleared that up. I'm Italian, you know, yeah. and my family, when we love you, we just have to have a little squeeze of bite. Help yourself! Help yourself! <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs>
He achieved notability in the London gay scene during the 1980s with his drag persona Lily Savage, through which he gained popularity in the 90s. O'Grady subsequently dropped the character and in the 2000s became the presenter of various television and radio shows, including The Paul O'Grady Show. Born to a working class Irish immigrant family in Tranmere, he moved to London in the late 70s, initially working as a peripatetic care officer for Camden Council. He developed his drag act in 1978, basing the character of Lily Savage upon traits found amongst female relatives. Performing as Savage for eight years at a South London gay club, the Royal Vauxhall Tavern, RVT. He gained a popular following among the London's gay community and used his character to speak out for gay rights. After being nominated for a 1992 Perrier Award, O'Grady attracted mainstream attention and made various television, radio and theatrical appearances. As Savage, he presented television shows such as The Big Breakfast 1995-96, Blankety Blank 97-2002 and Lily Live 2000-2001 earning various awards and becoming a well-known public figure. Paul O'Grady was born on the 14th of June 1955 at St Catherine's Hospital in Tranmere area of Birkenhead. His father, Patrick Paddy Grady, was Irish and had grown up in Ballincurry County, Roscommon, before moving to England in 1936 and settling in the working class area of Birkenhead. His name was changed from Grady to O'Grady in a paperwork mistake when he joined the Royal Air Force, but he kept the new name. Patrick married Mary Molly Savage 1916 to 1988, who was born in England to Irish immigrants from County Louth. Paul was their third child, his birth came over a decade after those of his brother Brendan and sister Sheila. O'Grady spent his early life at the family's rented home at 23 Holly Grove in Higher Tranmere. He later said, When I look back on my childhood, I have no bad memories. Our family was loving and full of affection. I never knew what divorce was until I moved to London. I was an indulged child and completely protected from anything bad. Leaving school aged 16, he obtained a job in the civil service, working as a clerical assistant for the DHS. He supplemented this income working part-time at the bar of the Royal Air Forces Association, RAFA Club. Called for a disciplinary hearing at the DHSS and accused of incompetent behaviour and tardiness, he resigned, obtaining a job at the Wheatsheaf Hotel in Virginia Water, Surrey. Age 17, O'Grady moved there. The management accused him of stealing, which he denied. Promptly returning to Birkenhead, he increasingly socialised with the Liverpudlian gay scene, attending meetings at the Campaign for Homosexual Equality and working at a gay bar called The Bear's Paw. This was kept a secret from his parents, to whom he was not out. He also had casual sex with a female friend, Diane Jansen, who became pregnant, news which O'Grady discovered in the same week that both his parents suffered heart attacks his mother made a recovery, but his father died. Following the birth of his daughter, Sharon Lee Jansen, in May 1974, he agreed to pay towards her upkeep, but refused to marry Jansen, recognising his homosexuality. While working for Camden School Social Services, O'Grady made his first attempt at putting together a drag act, creating the character of Lily Savage. He later said, I wanted to get up there, be larger than life, a creature that was more cartoon than human. His debut was on the afternoon of the 7th of October 1978 at the Black Cap Gay Pub in Camden, where his act involved miming the words to Barbara Streisand's Nobody Makes a Pass at Me from the show Pins and Needles. Following a family holiday to Poland, he visited an ex-boyfriend in Manila in the Philippines, there working briefly as a barman and a waiter at a brothel. In 1984, O'Grady began work as a barman at the Vauxhall Gay Pub, The Elephant and Castle, as Lily. He compared ladies' nights each Tuesday where amateur drag acts would perform. As compare, he tried out comedy routines, becoming known for insulting both the acts and the audience. He attracted growing crowds and he was interviewed by artist Patrick Proctor. After six months, he transferred his act to the nearby Royal Vauxhall Tavern, RVT Gay Cup, reopening his show on Thursday nights as Stars of the Future. In 1985, he obtained his own council flat in Vauxhall's Victoria Mansions. During the mid-1980s, he entered a relationship with Brendan Murph Murphy, the manager of a gay sauna near the Oval. Murphy subsequently became his manager. In 1998, the BBC produced a six-week Sunday series titled The Lily Savage Show, during which he interviewed guests like Alton John, Alan Yentob and Amphia Turner. 
O'Grady found the scripted, non-spontaneous nature of the series difficult and it was not well received. As Lily, he was invited onto other television chat shows, such as Richard and Judy. He appeared in a Christmas special of the cookery show Ready Steady Cook. He went on an eight-week tour as Lily before starring as Miss Hannigan in a West End revival of the musical Annie. He subsequently accompanied the show's tour of the UK before appearing in pantomime in Birmingham. He temporarily stood in for Des O'Connor on ITV's lunchtime chat show Today with Des and Mal, enjoying the feeling of presenting live. ITV executives then offered him his own daytime chat show, The Paul O'Grady Show. There was initial press concern that O'Grady's style of adult humour would not be appropriate for daytime TV slot. But ITV's controller of entertainment, Mark Bowers, declared that Paul is one of the funniest on television. He deserves to be on it far more than he is. The show first aired in October 2004 from 5pm to 6pm and saw O'Grady interviewing celebrity guests. It represented a glorious mix of seemingly unscripted banter, chat and slapstick humour. In producing the show, O'Grady worked with many old friends including warm-up man Andy Collins. The series was a hit, attaining between 2.5 and 2.7 million viewers daily. There were novelty acts, talking dogs, whistling goldfish and extraordinary stories. His audience laughed at the anecdotes and were brought right into the heart of the show. The inclusion of his dog Buster on the show proved particularly popular with the audiences. The show gained a devoted following with many fans attending the screenings, often as many as a hundred having to be turned away. Describing those attending the screenings, Simpson noted groups of middle-aged women dominate, but they are joined by beautiful 20-something women with flawless makeup, flashy city boys with Louis Vuitton briefcases, hip-looking students out for a good time, and pensioners just wanting a laugh in the afternoon. In 1974, with his friends Diane Jansen, O'Grady had daughter Sharon. His grandson Abel was born in December 2006, followed by a granddaughter in December 2009. From 1977 to 2005, he was in a marriage of convenience with Portuguese woman Teresa Fernandes, although he was not in an active relationship with her. His long-term lover and business partner was Brendan Frank Murphy, 4th of March 1956 to the 9th of June 2005. In the fourth volume of his biography, he noted that he has always had a penchant for the bad boys. In 2017, he married Andre Portasio. Known to many friends as Lily or Lil, O'Grady was known for having many high-profile and celebrity friends, including politician Mo Molum, actress Amanda Meeling and Barbara Windsor, comedian Brenda Gilhooley and singer Cilla Black. Paul divided his time between his central London flat and his rural Kentish farmhouse, where he grew organic fruit and vegetables, and a variety of herbs having a keen interest in herbalism. A lifelong animal lover as a child, O'Grady kept rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs, mice, a ferret, and a rat as pets. He commented that his mother thought him a bit weird as a result. At his farm, he owned sheep, pigs, goats, donkeys, ducks, chickens, geese, ferrets, bats, mice, and of course, dogs. Two of O'Grady's pets' dogs became well known to the British public through appearances on The Paul O'Grady Show. The first was a rescue dog, Buster Alvis Savage, a Shih Tzu stroke Bichon Freeze cross. Buster was euthanized in November 2009 as a result of his cancer. O'Grady dedicated the second volume of his autobiography to Buster, describing him as the greatest canine star since Lassie. A second dog, the Cairn Terrier Olga, also attracted attention. In 2013, it was revealed that she was undergoing chemotherapy due to cancer. Olga was euthanized in April 2018 after suffering from kidney failure. In 2015, he told a reporter that despite his wealth, he still felt very much working class. I know that probably sounds strange. Mentally, I still am. I'm still thinking, have I got the rent for Friday? Raised as a Roman Catholic in his autobiography, he related having grown out of Catholicism after his mother's death but had always been interested in alternative religions, citing a particular interest in Wicca. He has also reported seeing unexplained lights over his Kent home, considering the possibility that he was being observed by extraterrestrials. Paul O'Grady died unexpectedly but peacefully on the 28th of March 2023, aged 67, from sudden cardiac arrhythmia. His death was announced by his husband, Andre Portasio, and tributes poured in from global figures and celebrities, including Camilla, television presenter Lorraine Kelly, and LGBT rights campaigner Peter Tatchell. Paul O'Grady has been hailed by many as a national treasure. His final performance was as Miss Hannigan in Annie at the Edinburgh Playhouse just days before his death. His funeral was held at the Church of St. Romwald, Bonington, on the 20th of April, 2023. 
So there's all the information there about Paul O'Grady. What an amazing man. You think about what he did for uh, gay rights, LGBTQ plus community, uh, what he did for charity, for dogs charities, animal charities, um, and for people as well, for children and things like that. He done such amazing work and brought the attention of things that weren't necessarily always in the public eye to the public eye, which is great. And, um, you know, I think that really shows about his background and where he comes from and the type of person that he was. Um, and we need more celebrities like that, don't we? You know, if you're, I doubt any celebrities will watch this, but if you are a celebrity and you are like that, let Paul be that guiding light, you know, that, that light of example to be a bit more humble and to know where you come from and remember your roots and your backgrounds and all that sort of stuff. And don't just think that because you've got to a certain level now that you're better than people or people that are worse off than you um, don't deserve a chance in life. You know, help others if you can. I think that's the most important part. Um, and one of the things that really came from Paul as a person, as that real kind person. Now, we are here early. I don't know what time it is. It's 6.35, early start, you know me, up at the crack of dawn. Um, I don't know if the church would be open, but we'll give it a go, shall we? Let's have a look. Now, of course, this wasn't the entrance which the, um, the coffin was carried in that we saw last week on television, but okay, there's one part. Let's keep our fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if it will be. Ah, it's locked. Oh, well. Never mind. We did try. What I will do is put some photos up of inside the church. Because... There are some photos of inside. Now, earlier on, I sort of panned down this pathway and this is where they carried um, Paul's coffin when it was on, when you saw it on the television and there was either a member of the public or a member of the news standing here and you saw them walk across there and into that door there. Now that door looks like it's one of those ones that's opened from the inside. So there's no handle here, but we can have a little look, can't we? No. Shame. So there's all the information there on Paul O'Grady. What an amazing man he was. Um, you know, so he's done so much in his life. And obviously I can't pick out all of it, but we have to find snippets that are worth reading out. Um, and that's what I've done today. Otherwise I'd be here forever if I read out everything. Anyway, been having a good look around. I think I found it. So many lovely flowers. Now, as I drove past the shop earlier on, it was closed. So I will go back and get some flowers and bring them up from all of us. Okay. Paul James O'Grady died 28th of March, 2023, aged 67 years. Oh. And of course, next to him, was his former manager and former partner. There you can see that. Brendan Murphy died 9th of June, 2005, aged 49 years. And then of course around the back, we've got what we all saw, Buster, bless him. So there we have the final resting place of Paul O'Grady. We've got to say a massive thank you, Paul bless you um, you did so much for entertainment over the years you made so many people laugh um, such an amazing guy and in such a beautiful place as well that he's been buried um, obviously in good company his former manager and uh, former partner of course as well 
place is so peaceful. You can see why people choose these places that are out the way, can't you? And just calm, tranquil, peaceful places, you know. So that's it. That's the final resting place of Paul O'Grady. Um, it's been worth the journey to come down and pay our respects to him. Now, as I was driving past, the florist, well, the shop was closed. So I'm gonna wait for it to open, go back, and bring some flowers back from all of us. I won't film all that again, because I'll just do it um, from us, from us, all of us, okay? So I will put some flowers down for us, but it just wasn't open on the way here. I did leave really early this morning, as you saw. It looks like Paul's in good company. Um, there's some really, uh, astounding little headstones and graves and things like that around here um, and what a beautiful place look at it you know talk about tranquility peacefulness calmness um, I definitely think he chose the right place here and he's surrounded by the right people anyway on that note don't forget please leave your comments down below what did you like about Paul um, what was your favorite show did he did you ever meet him did he ever help you um you know give you advice or anything like that at all um make sure that you oh i've got, I've got to say this one of my favorite memories um is when he was on most haunted because <laughs> you got him and Derek Acora, these two scousers real broad scouse accents and i remember it. it was in 2005 it was halloween it was on his daytime show and yvette fielding came onto his show and then she invited him to most haunted that evening they were doing a live at the blind beggar i think it was in in london and he went down there and straight away his, his energy was amazing he's straight in there and he's having a laugh with Derek Akora and he's gobbling off to the ghost and i will never forget that he's just in this room and he's going come on come on <laughs> and uh that just always makes me laugh when i think about um that with Paul such an amazing guy anyway leave your comments of your memories of what you know really stood out for you and uh, if you like the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you all on the next one take it easy ta -da.